Oh yeah, we're back. We're gonna do some more Alice in Chains reactions today. This is a performance that I, uh, I may have seen, but I don't think I've seen it. I've seen this intro, I've used this clip in one of my videos. However, it's Alice in Chains, live at the Roseland Club, New York. Uh, oh, New Year's Eve, 1992, going into 1993. What an era for grunge, what an era for music in general. Let's just dive right in and take a listen. The song we're gonna be doing is Wood. It's Wood. Let's go. Who are they? These are my boys. Let's get down and dirty with Alice get and Chase. Come go. on. You guys hear that Lane did a little extra there? Hey, yeah. That's hit the chorus now. Yeah, the feedback would drive me crazy. But as a performer, as a performer, you gotta blow through the feedback. You pretend it's not there. There's nothing you can do, and you can't stop to start over. The sound guy's probably. I've been doing sound guy work lately. It is a nightmare. You hear feedback, you know everyone's looking at you. It's your fault. So you're like, ah. Anyway, onward. A lot of cool stuff there in his voice, like really splatty, yeah, ah, instead of, you know, he's got a lot of different voices. You could even hear, try to see it, he even did some try to, little breathy stuff there. Uh, this is insane. I would love to be at this show, as all of them, you know, as the same as all of them. Here we go. Jerry's getting low. Oh, he's got four and two. Look at the headstock. Boom. Four tuners on one, two on the other. It's, usually you get three and three, or all six on the side. Here he's got... Four and two. That's probably a G and L thing. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Well, back with music, you can do four times around in the air. Nowadays, people be like, "Where's the vocals?" Oh my god. Same old trip, it's a little sharp, but in a good way, like, same old, instead of same old trip, it's same old trip it was. Same old trip. Same old trip. There's something that singing teachers tell you is to come in on the note. A lot of people are flat, like, same old trip it was. Like, they eventually get there, but if you think, same. See how I just did that? That was unnatural, or that was me naturally sliding up, but if, same old trip it was, same old trip it was back then. If you think about coming in on the note from the top, you're not gonna be flat. And that's, maybe he got that advice there, maybe he's just had the right energy and same old trip it was. Anyway. As far as that, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah! Yeah! Ah! The way he went, yeah, uh. He didn't have any sort of garbage in between there, like my note. He just went straight to it.
okay, so one thing I want to say is Jerry improvising, Lane improvising, you know, they're doing different, maybe he's not improvising, but he's doing different things in the recording. Sean Kinney is doing the exact before every chorus. His stuff is very, his stuff is very um, intentional. It's very, what is it, cookie cutter? Not, that's, that's cookie cutter seems bad, but it's very um, on book. He's on the book for that. And and the other guys are kind of going, going off. And this is 92, so I'm guessing it's Mike Starr on bass. We got to look this up. When did the mics switch over? Alice in Chains, Mike Starr. Yeah, Mike Starr is the first guy who died um, later. He was in Chains until, what, 93. From 87 to 93, it's Mike Starr. So 93 is the cutoff. So this, 92, this is one of Mike Starr's last performances with Alice in Chains. Um, so yeah, Mike Starr Sean Kinney are playing real good, real stock, real album quality. There's a better way. Album quality. And then Lane and Jerry are doing that's and that's kind of what you want. You want your rhythm section to be sturdy. And you want your your soloists and your lead guys to embellish and, and do different things so the crowd knows it's live. And then you can also hear like Lane's walking that tightrope, like, oh, is he gonna be able to hit the high note? Yeah, he did. Love that stuff. Anyway, onward. so different. I love the fact that it's a little bit different. Then he sheds the jacket. Look, he ditches the jacket for the next song. So one thing with rock music is it is a tightrope performance. It's not like it's going to be perfect. You know what I mean? There's going to be, when they embellish, there's going to be little cracks and little, I don't know. There's going to be imperfections that are beautiful. And that performance was a beautiful, that performance was a, was a, was a great example of rock music. It's live. It's off the rocks. It's it's beautiful. Let's uh, let's go back and listen to those last chords. Listen to the bass. He he hammers on. Burn. So if I want, could want you, right? He hits those notes. They move all over the place. Do 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 do. Right. He's got a melody there. The chords just down, 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 and then the bass is. Ooh, ooh. Listen to that bass. A little different than the album. I feel like it's a little bit slower. The drums are a little bit different. Everybody's doing a little bit of a different thing. One thing, and this is kind of the, the standout part of this song. Am I that note, oh, it's a tritone, so doom, 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 I don't know if I can sing it right, but it's basically a D to an A flat, right? That's the tritone. Notes aside, the chord's doing a tritone, and he's going, am I wrong? It's so strange, every time. And then, boom, have I run to, instead of have I run to, it's have I run too far? So if you wait and you start later, then you have to speed up to pick it to to make up for the fact that you started later. So you gotta instead of ha, uh, have I run to? It's have I run to? So sick. Improvisational. Whoops. All right, let's go back. Ooh, a little teaser. Okay, really cool thing about this. 
is he ditches the jacket. That's my favorite thing. And then they're going to come out with what I believe was Angry Chair. So next week, we're going to listen to Angry Chair. Make sure you guys, if you liked it, to show me that you liked it by pressing the like button. If you want more of this stuff, comment uh, what performances you think are going to be good. Preferably, there's a video. If there's a video, if there's no video, it's hard for me to analyze. You know, it's more fun to analyze with a video. But maybe eventually I'll get into some of these live recordings without videos because there's some good ones out there. But if you guys have a good one, put it in the comments below. I'll do Nirvana. I'll do Soundgarden. I'll do uh, what's the other one? Pearl Jam. I'll do all the big four. I'll do all whatever you guys want. Just put it in the comments so I know what you guys like. Uh, that's been it for me today. We're on the journey to find the best grunge live performances or at least listen to some good live grunge. Take it easy. Lemon squeezy. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs>